Hi, my name is Reese, and I want to review this new portable power station from Dampson. It's the 600L. It has a number of features, but one of the things that first stood out to me was its price point compared to those that are similar to this one. So let's check this guy out. So in case you don't know what this is, it's a portable power station. It has a nice handle so you can carry it. It's got batteries inside of here. You can charge them with AC and DC sources in the back, and then it has AC and DC outputs in the front. I'll go over that. The batteries inside of here are lithium ion phosphate, semi-solid state technology, so a newer technology, uh, which is great to see. These are rated for 4,000 charge cycles before it gets to that 80% mark of the original capacity. That's kind of how they rate these things. So uh, that's a very long lasting chemistry. So a, a cycle is starting at 100%, draining the battery down to 0% and charging it back up to 100%. So that's a full cycle. So 4,000 cycles is what it's rated for. So let's start with a tour of the unit before we get into things like charging and discharging. This power station is very portable, comes in at 17 pounds, 11 ounces. So starting with the screen, the 600L has a two color LCD screen, state of charge very clearly seen, as well as this little animation to show how full the tank is. It has the input and output wattages on either side. It can input and output at the same time. And depending on what's happening, you can see the time to fill or the time to empty over here, and there's all kinds of status icons on this side. Down here on the output side, there are two three-pronged AC outlets. There's a button to turn them on or off, same with the DC side of things. These AC outlets can output 600 watts of continuous power. They can do a little bit higher than that for a few seconds, and they can also peak at 1200 watts. So if you wanted to start something like a compressor that needs a surge of power briefly, these can do up to 1200 watts. So that's generally not enough to start your full size refrigerator in your home, uh, but it can do 1200 watts. So maybe you can do like a mini fridge. Over here on the DC side, there is two USB-C ports. One is rated at 100 watts. The other is at 30. There's two USB-A ports. There's a D small DC barrel port. Here's your car 12 volt port under here. So that might be really handy for uh, air compressors or uh, mini fridges or something like that that can run off a 12 volt source. And then there's a little light here that has a high, a low, and an SOS function. On the back for inputs, there's an XT60 port up here that can do a solar panel up to 200 watts or charge from your car's 12 volt source. It does come with cable to plug in there. And then here's your typical wall plug and it does come with the cable to charge by wall AC. On the sides, there's not really anything to point out. Here's what the top looks like. Just basically flat, there's a little bit of an incline to it. And again, the handle. And then on the bottom, here's what it looks like. So for features, let's talk about charging. My favorite way is always to talk about solar first because it's awesome. You can just collect energy from the sun. The 600L can handle up to 200 watts of solar panels. In this example here, I have a 200 watt solar panel connected. And if you look on the screen, hopefully you can see it, it's producing about 140 watts. And with a 61% state of charge, the estimate in the corner is about three hours to get to 100%. For charging from wall AC, the maximum rate is 600 watts. So I did a speed test starting at 0%. I went into the app and set the charge rate at the fastest speed. And it took about an hour and 11 minutes to charge to 80% and about an hour and 43 minutes to go all the way to 100%. In the Dabson smartphone app, which can communicate through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, you can custom set the charging wattage or you can even select quiet mode charging, which defaults to charging at 130 watts. So we know it can be charged by solar panels or wall AC, but can you charge by AC and DC sources at the same time? Let's find out. For the DC source, I'm gonna be using this 12 volt car port and then obviously plug this in. So just with the 12 volt source, we're getting about 94 watts. You can see the solar panel icon is on. So let's plug in AC. So I can tell that it's working. It's pulling in a DC source at 100 watts. About 170 watts is being added to that number, which is coming from the AC source right there. So yes, it can input AC and DC at the same time. So practically what that feature means is that when you have a solar panel hooked up, it's gonna use all of that solar input to charge the batteries and then supplement whatever charge setting you have with AC. So you're not gonna be wasting any of the solar energy. Now let's move on to output. I put the 600 watt continuous AC output to the test and it performed great going from 100 to 0% with a 600 watt draw the entire time without any issues. 
I mentioned before about the 1200 watt peak or surge wattage, but if you need a little bit more continuous power over the 600 watts, I measured that it can output 800 watts for about 20 seconds before the inverter went into overload. And according to Dapson, it can go up to 900 watts of output, but it does this by dropping the voltage. It's normally at 120 volts. So this is really only good for resistive loads up to that 900 watts. So potentially like a very small coffee maker could work with this guy. I didn't experience any issues while charging the 600L, but I did notice something a bit odd. The fan noise would change speed up and down exactly at 300 watts, or slow down at 299 or below. So it would sound like it's revving up and down, and if you're in a quiet room, it was noticeable. Here's an example. Dapson told me they know about this, and they are planning to address it in a new firmware update. The 600L has a UPS-like feature, which means when it's plugged into the grid like it is now and you lose grid power, it can switch over to providing power to the AC outlets from the internal battery. That is supposed to happen in 15 milliseconds or so. So I have it tested up here. I don't have an oscilloscope to test the 15 milliseconds exactly, but I do have a laptop without a battery in it. And then behind it, I have this light. Both of them are plugged in here so you can see Yoda over here is lit up. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the power and we'll see if the computer's still running and you can see if there's a flicker on the lights. Ready? Three, two, one. There was a slight flicker of the lights, which is what you expect, but the laptop is still running. So that feature is helpful for things like CPAP machines or other devices that you want them to continue to run even during a power outage. Now let's test these USB-C output ports to see if they're outputting what they say they can do. As you can see on the screen here, it says 100 watts is the output. So this one should be 100 watts in my independent meter. It says 98.1 watts, so that's close enough. It's just 0.1 amps lower, so that's very, very close to 100. Now let's test the 30 watt rated output. It says 28 watts there on the screen. This one is showing about the same thing, 27.7 or 27.8. So very close to 30 watts. So both of these USB-C ports are doing what they're supposed to. In terms of AC efficiency, which is trying to measure the usable energy out of the AC ports, I usually test with a load that's 50% of the power station's continuous output rating. So for the 600L, that means 300 watts. And the numbers were pretty consistent at 86.5% efficiency, so that's good. But what is interesting is the efficiency during the maximum drain of 600 watts from 100% down to zero, the fans are spinning a little bit more. The efficiency only dropped to 85.2%, and I expected it to drop much further. The Dapson smartphone app is pretty solid. It's much improved from the version I had used before with one of their older power stations. So it seems to work just fine. You can see the input and output right there on the screen. It works with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So if you're camping and you don't have the internet, you can work with Bluetooth. You can toggle things on and off. The settings menu has a lot of different options. The charge settings, which I showed you, you can do energy management and have it stop or, or start at a certain state of charge. You can do energy savings mode with timeout values. You can start and stop certain things on a schedule if you wanted. My favorite is always the firmware update. So I'm, I'm up to date with a click of a button and there's some other little things that you can do. You can also turn it off, which is interesting with the power button right there. The power station comes with two charging cables, the one for your wall AC, and this one is for your car charging with the 12 volt port. Let me share my final thoughts on the 600L. I enjoyed testing out this power station. Other than that RPM issue I mentioned, which they said they were addressing, I didn't experience any issues and the unit performed to its specifications. I like the price point currently at 269 with a coupon because that's less expensive than similar quality 768 watt hour portable power stations like this one, like the EcoFlow River 2 Pro or the Blue Eddy AC70. The uh, 600 watts of output here may be plenty for most folks, uh, use case scenarios, because if you're going to use this camping or for smaller things like lights or charging devices or computers, that's plenty. But some might want more than 600 and some of those comparable stations can do a little bit more. But they also weigh more than this guy. This guy is, is less expensive and is lighter in weight. I like that they included semi-solid state lithium ion phosphate batteries. They're one of the newer battery tech that's out there. I like it has a five year warranty with the registration. And finally, it's a small thing, but I like the handle here in the back, the way that this is designed because it makes it easy to carry around uh, more naturally. 
Check out the video description down below for any coupon codes and the latest prices or news, and I plan to keep that updated with the latest, and thanks for watching.